Hello again, Biology 300 students. Mr. Parker coming at you. And this is the ecology screencast session number two. And we'll be looking at ecological succession. Now you got to remember back in uh, session one, we looked at the ideas of the biosphere, went through some of the restrictions of what a biosphere consists of. We looked at ecosystem, uh, what makes up the ecosystem, populations, communities, uh, the abiotic, biotic factors, and how their influence um, is how they influence on the ecosystem and how the ecosystem builds up particular biomes and the biosphere. And remember I talked about initially that the ecosystems are all interconnected. Okay. Now we're going to look at um, how an ecosystem actually goes from one type of ecosystem to another um, through what we call ecological succession. Okay. And um, what I'm going to do is use a little video here first to kind of um, go ahead and reinforce or kind of introduce you to the ideas. And then we'll come back and do some definitions and kind of define and do a little bit more explanation on the idea. Communities of organisms within ecosystems are constantly changing to meet new environmental conditions, climatic changes, or the sudden arrival of a new species. Sometimes there can be very dramatic changes. After a volcanic eruption, all that is left is exposed barren rocks. Soon afterwards, a succession of plants invade the barren environment. Gradually, these pioneer communities give way to other vegetation native to that climate, and animals can move in because there is food to sustain them. This type of succession in communities not only happens on land, but also in aquatic environments. For example, many northern lakes in North America were formed when the most recent glacier retreated 9,000 to 10,000 years ago. At first, the lakes had little nutrition and almost no life. Then reeds and bulrushes began to grow by the shore. The water slowly became rich in nutrients and attracted algae and invertebrates. Fish began to live in the habitat along with ducks, amphibians, and various carnivores like herons. Ecosystems such as this can exist for many years, perhaps centuries, but lakes often silt up and turn into swamps and marshes with yet a different ecosystem and different community of organisms. Succession in any ecosystem is not strictly linear. Ecosystems constantly go through cycles of regeneration and change. A forest fire can replace a mature forest with young trees, and with it, new populations of birds and insects. As the forest matures, different species of trees will dominate while others decline. This cycle continues until another fire begins the process again. All right, Biology 300 students, hopefully that, um, that particular um, video had given you some basics, uh, basic information on what is, uh, ecological succession is and what it consists of. Um, now what we're going to do is kind of go through some more of the definitions and hopefully you can get th this down for us. So um, basically ecological succession is pro uh, the process by which an existing community is gradually, re gradually replaced by another community. All right, so we're transitioning from one particular type of community. Remember, a community is a group of populations a uh, group of different types of species all linked together and over a period of time they're going to change from one type of particular ecosystem transitioning into another type of ecosystem. Okay, and um, remember that every organism has a role in this um, where they affect the environmental conditions that are around it. Okay, you do, uh, dogs do, cats do, birds, whatever it is, we all have some type of effect on our particular environment. Okay. So looking at, um, going off here, down to the bottom left here, looking at this particular idea is that succession often leads to a fairly stable collection of organisms, okay? And this stable collection of organisms is what they refer to as a climax community. And these climax communities is what we re, um, kind of, if you look worldwide, are what we refer to as biomes. And I've mentioned the term biome a little bit before in the first screencast. Basically, you have a, a group of ecosystems that build up this idea of a biome, and these biomes are 
again, uh, what we call refer as climax communities, or a very stable collection of uh, plants and animals that are within that particular ecosystem. And they're not going to really, what they've reached a point where they're not going to really sway uh, being, you know, from one ecosystem to the next unless there's some drastic, drastic change that occurs within the climate and the environment that these particular ecosystems are um, located, okay? Um, there's two different types of succession that we're going to look at, okay? Um, but first here, I'm going to show you kind of the different uh, ideas or the different stable cl um, communities uh, or ecosystems that we look at, referred to again as climax communities, okay? So you guys have probably heard these way back, you know, in junior high, I think my son was just telling me about these. He's in third grade talking about the different biomes um, that are out there. So these are all what we refer to as your stable or your climax communities. Um, you can see how they're dispersed throughout the world. Uh, and if you think about it, there's not a whole lot of variation. Now, it might give and take a little bit here and there as it goes, but uh, particularly, you know, it hasn't changed throughout the, most of the time of how these communities have, uh, or these climax communities have maintained uh, their stability um, climate and environment, organisms that make it up, that kind of stuff, um, as they've reached this stable point. Okay, now obviously through evolutionary change that we talked about, there's going to be some change that occurred until they got to this point. Okay, so um, taking a look at um, the, the idea of ecological succession, um, if you look here, um, this first particular one, you can kind of see um, there's basically a pond there, okay, some sandy borders and not, not a whole lot of vegetation. Uh, as we move over here to letter B, okay, you can see in the description says after two years with the pond, you can see that there's a lot of low vegetation, some cotton weed, um, and you can see there's a lot less sand that's remaining compared to this first picture that we looked at. Okay, moving in, um, now here it says after a 50-year pond, okay, now it's bordered by these mature type of trees, um, and you can see sediment is produced by organisms, and what's happening is this pond starting to get filled in. And then we've reached here, as it says, 150, 250 years later, um, the, the area that was once a pond has now become a meadow. All right, so if we pan back out and look at stage one and moving on all the way through stage four, you can see how over a period of time, now this, again, this doesn't happen overnight. This took over you know, 150, 250 years for it to transition from just being a pond transitioning into being a metal and um, reaching um, what they call a climax community or the stable community. All right. So that's kind of the process of how it, um, you can looking at the step by step how ecological succession works. Uh, we're going to take a look at two different types of ecological, ecological succession. Um, there's primary succession versus secondary succession. Okay, so the primary succession again what it says here is occurs in places where no living uh, communities existed before. Okay. So this land formation is new. Um, example there is the volcanic islands, right? So when a volcano erupts, you know, from under sea, the, uh, what's going to happen, the lava is going to eventually harden and it's going to create this new land formation, okay? And in order for um, new organisms to be able to live on here, there's something that we refer to as pioneer species, okay? And these pioneer species are, are very hardy type organisms. Um, that can tolerate these harsh conditions, you know, that don't have a whole lot of nutrients to them, um, you know, like lichens, um, and what they do is they can feed off and break down the rock in order to um, kind of produce what it needs to do, and eventually um, it leads to, okay, you know, through maybe bird droppings or wind-blown seeds where you eventually get some plants developing and eventually move through the succession process where you've gone from no life to having life to eventually becoming a stable community. Um, this climax community that we referred to. Okay, so that's primary succession, and that is where um, the pioneer species come in, settled area that's never had any, uh, there's no land formation, never been any living thing on, on that particular um, area. Then we have secondary succession, okay, and this occurs in areas where natural disasters or human activities have wiped out an existing living community. So now we're talking about we had this land formation. There's once living organisms there, it went through the process, we had an ecosystem. Something has wiped them out, okay? There's some type of natural disaster. Humans have wiped out this community. And now we have these pioneer species come back in, same type of species, come back in, and then they create this environment to be favorable for these less hardy organisms to come in and start settling and start going through the process of ecological succession. So primary, there was no living organisms there. Secondary, there was once living organisms. They got wiped out. 
and the, the pioneer species had to come back in and settle that particular area. All right, and this again just kind of shows you the process of how ecological succession occurs. Eventually, we, we have these barren rock okay, and going through the process. This is what they refer to as the pioneer stages. Uh, you have the lichens come in um, and help kind of create nutrients from the rock. Um, then you have some plants. It could be windblown or bird droppings or however it gets there. And then you can see as the vegetation grows, eventually it reaches what we refer to as this climax community, um, where it's going to become very stable. And most likely there's not going to be a whole lot of change here occurring um, through this general area, unless some type of, again, an actual disaster comes through and wipes out this particular area. Okay, again, another idea, another picture, different diagram, just giving you an idea again where we're going from. Uh, you know, initially we'll have, before these annual plants, we'll actually have these pioneer species come in and eventually we'll get in these perennials up to these hardwood trees, which are these very climax communities, very stable type communities that we have. Okay, so in, um, this is the second screencast for the ecology, uh, ecology units um, dealing with ecological succession. And again, obviously tying in what ecosystem we talked about in the first screencast with ecosystems, communities, species, populations, that kind of stuff, and how organisms or areas can transition from one type of uh, ecosystem to another, and the ideas of primary versus secondary succession, where primary is there never was life on this particular landmass, and secondary there was life, ecosystems developed, got wiped out by a natural disaster, and the pioneer species have to come back in and settle it and um, get prepared for some of these less hardy organisms. Okay, so that again, that was screencast session number two on ecological succession.